Good afternoon and welcome to the Global Fashion Workshop channel. Today our guest is Vitaly Shriganov, a denim guru. Hello, friends. You've already met Vitaly and seen him work many times, so we'll get right down to business. What do you have for us today? While we were preparing our course on denim, I can understand it when you come to us with a garment in mind, but what are we going to do with all this? While we were preparing our course on denim, we made lots of jeans and even a denim jacket, and we have a lot of leftover scraps. I took some more of those from the workshop. It's a shame that there are always pieces of fabric left over. You're supposed to throw them away, but they keep piling up, so it's a rather pressing topic. Today we will be recycling scrap. We'll be making unearthly beauty out of garbage. Sometimes I wonder how big of a pile of scraps we'd have if we saved every piece our entire lives and kept them all in one place. Yes, it gets pretty scary. In reality, students often ask me for all sorts of scraps. They come up with ways to use them, and I am always happy to help them out. Okay, so today we'll be making one of those very things out of all this, a simple but catchy item. It'll be a brooch shaped as an aster. Sounds exciting. Here we have all kinds of scraps. We have metal seed beads for decorating our piece. Also one of these things. I'm sure you can find one in any hardware store. If you don't, you can use a safety pin. Yes, you can use a safety pin, but I'm sure you'll find it. Nowadays there are websites and aggregators that help you find anything. Some thread, a needle, a pair of scissors, and some patience. Yes. Okay, let's begin. I've collected some useful scraps here. Are you going to cut or should I? I'll show you how to cut, then you'll do that, and I will thread a needle. We have this extra bit here. Let's remove it. All right. Look, we need pieces like this one, arbitrary cuts. You can make long pieces like this one. Is this really going to work? Like this. It's even better if you crumple them like this. Okay, you go on cutting and I'll be Jack the Ripper. <laughs> go on, crumple it. In the meantime, I'll make some more of these petals for our aster. Actually, it doesn't have to be an aster. Yes, it does, because you'll watch this video and make an aster, and if you want to make something different, you'll learn it from a different video. Olga, as usual, you are a sly fox. There's an important element here. If you cut the petals obliquely, they will look even more interesting. How long should I crumple? Keep crumpling, don't fret. You don't have to be precise with denim. I like your approach. We are done here, now look. Can I cut this in one go? We could. Then we'd have a pretty big aster. This will be the piece between the front half and the back half. We always have a strip like this during drafting. I'll tell you what, crumpling isn't as easy as it seems. I'm going to make an arbitrary cut like this and round it off a bit. Okay, I'll keep crumpling. That should be enough. Enough? Are you sure? I thought we were making a really puffy aster, no? That's it. One moment. Keep going. These don't crumple well. It looks more like it's going to be a chrysanthemum instead of an aster. So puffy. Wow, I've never done this before. <laughs> Keep crumpling, don't slack off. Olga is a terrible lazy bones. I always have to scold her. She always shifts her job onto others and we're the ones that have to do the work. I am a good manager and organizer. Did I treat you to a coffee for nothing at lunch? Give it back. I'm afraid we're on the wrong channel. 
I specifically took this pretty piece from our course on making a denim jacket. We used it for hemming. I specifically saved it for this. We will make something special out of it. I'm going to cut a petal out of it, obliquely, like this. There we go. Perfect. If you struggle to find a denim scrap, you can always buy a course on working with denim. You'll make jeans and have leftover material, and then use it to make a chrysanthemum. Okay, that's enough crumpling. Here we have our petals, and now we remove all this extra stuff. You, not all of it, right? Just to make sure they don't unravel, get rid of all this loose stuff. That's it. Got it. We can leave them like this, but I think we should iron them out to make them look nice and neat. We'll iron them off camera and proceed to assembling our brooch. We've ironed out our petals. Not ironed out, we've carefully ironed and smoothed every petal with love. Right, each one with love. Olga, you're threading a needle. Me? Perhaps it's your turn to do it. Olga is a great manager. She gave everyone valuable directives off camera, so I decided to be a step ahead. Well, if I have to, I'll do it. Now we arrange the pieces in a checkered pattern. Should I use a single or a double thread? I should have made it longer. Is this enough? Double. Should be fine. Wasting your cotton thread. No, those are polyester. We lay them out like this and we have this chessboard. Looks great from above. Yes, tie a good knot. You do it in such a peculiar manner. I'm a lefty. Really, I didn't know. Live and learn, as they say. I can't do it like everyone else. I can't tie a knot with my right hand. You can be arbitrary here. I'm gathering the middle of this piece. Let's talk about thread as well. I chose gauge 30, which is rather dense. It's the type of thread used to sew jeans. We don't get paid for advertising. I gathered it like this, and we have a petal here. Wow, so that's how it's done. I can just feel how I crave this exact brooch. She's wheedling it out of me. Pretty soon, Vitaly's going to take part in a fair. We have all sorts of events happening here in Krasnodar. And he says, I can't gift it to you, I'm going to sell it. And I go, how can you? You're distracting us from an important part. Look, we've gathered it like this. Now we cross them like this. We drive the needle through all this thickness. You can use a thimble. I've been taught to, but I can't use them. I remember how in the House of Models, Rosa Mikhailovna always reprimanded me. You're supposed to use a thimble, why are you pricking your fingers? But I just couldn't do it. That's why I chose denim. It's a rough, masculine material. And it all comes together pretty well. I don't use thimbles, but when you're sewing a light-colored fabric, if you prick your finger and it bleeds, it's a catastrophe. Of course, work stops right there. Now I've pulled it back out. Look at this beauty. It's a bird for now. If you're too lazy to make a flower, you can stop here and have a bird instead. But we'll keep going. And we keep going, doing it all arbitrarily. No rules, no schematics. We conceal nothing, right? Right, we can use one color. We're hiding nothing. Hurry up. <laughs> Olga, every time we work together, it's an adventure. This is secret information. Let's keep going.
We have nothing to hide. Have you ever made these before? This is my first time, an improvisation. I love making things for the first time in front of the camera because the second time it's no longer as exciting. Yes, the second time is not the same. Still, you have to make another one for the fair. You know how to do it now, and next time it'll be quicker and prettier. Because of the recording of the new courses, I have customers standing outside my window with torches and pitchforks, wishing death upon me, because I've been trying to finish many orders for quite some time. Oh God, I hope they don't show up here. You can come, but please address all your questions to these people. In reality, I am very thankful to all my customers for patiently waiting for me to finally get to their orders. And in my situation, customers, especially long-time customers, can tell if I had to outsource my work. They say, you didn't make this, I can just see a stranger's hand here. That's why when I watch Instagram stories, 5 a.m. Vitaly is returning from work, 6 a.m. Vitaly is returning from work. Yes, yes, this is a classic story with me. Okay, our aster is really taking shape now. Let's add another one this way. Should we add one in light blue? No, you see here... The designer sees it his way. Our middle here is of a different texture, so we won't. Fine, fine. I'll have a designer brooch, not some amateur thing. The problem with the needle? That brooch is getting pretty thick. Yes, it's rather thick. Now we'll have an important moment. As a maker, I have to leave my signature on everything I make. What a cute thingy! This piece of lining that I found on the floor after working on an item becomes a part of this. There's an interesting story about a role model of mine, Christian Dior. It's something I aspire to. When he was presenting a dress to a customer of his, she said, what a wonderful dress, it would be great if I had a hat to go with it. Back at the workshop, he found a piece of the fabric he'd used to make the dress, folded it masterfully, pinned it and said, here's your hat. That will be another 200 francs. Why so much, she said, all you did was use a piece of fabric. He takes the hat back, removes the pin, unravels the hat, hands her the piece of fabric and the pin, go on and make it yourself. Same story here. In any case, no one's going to do this better than me. Bravo! Well, well, well. It's turning out wonderful. I can already see myself wearing my jeans, a white shirt or a t-shirt. I've lost some weight. It's a long, strange story, but now they fit me perfectly. To quote a known cartoon character, someone eats too much. Oh, please, I know you. And somewhere around here, the brooch, or on my hat, a denim or otherwise, or on the cap, right? Or as a bracelet. Should we wrap it up? No, please, death-defying act. I will spare nothing for you, my friends. I can't watch this. Look, now we just need this final piece and that should be it. Let's show this to the camera. We'll do it this way. Sure, why not? Should we make it smaller and crop it a bit? We'll add this piece and then crop. Wow, that's something. 
Don't worry about these edges too early. If you see extra bits, you can always trim them later. There we go. Turns out you were right to prepare a long thread. Are we going to sew this on now, or will the beads go first? The beads first. These seed beads have their own story. I'll tell it in a minute. I knew it from the start that these were no ordinary beads. Any kind of seed beads will do. But these beads are special. Okay, look, I fixed the thread. Now let's trim. Just like that? Now these are real petals here. Just make sure you don't cut off the pretty parts, like this. Wow! I think this should do fine. Perhaps trim this one a bit? It has kind of a rough tail. Now, like real gardeners, we go ahead and shear things off. I think there's a golden rule here that should be followed. Make sure to stop in time. You should always know when to stop. Let's ruffle this up a little. This is where you add your own touch. A bit more. That's it. Take a look. We can stop here. If you have the equipment, you can staple it with a rivet. I traitorously forgot my own scary device that does the job. That's why we have beads. And their story is quite interesting. I bought them at a flea market in Istanbul, where they sell all kinds of things relevant to our profession. They're made of brass and were sold by weight, which I find curious. Okay, the most important thing now is to mark the center and decorate our sloppiness away. The seams. Right. We seem to have just enough thread. We can actually sew this thing on as well right now. But perhaps we should do it separately. It's easier that way. We'll attach a couple more beads off camera and then we'll affix the pin and show you the final result. See ya. Okay, look, this seamy bottom part where all the petals are attached gets covered with a small piece like this. I stitched it on using diagonal basting stitch. I repeat, with denim, all the peculiarities that you have come to consider defects are effects. And the sloppier you are with denim, the richer and showier your final work will be. Let's start from the top. We've made a core for our aster slash chrysanthemum. Fantasy flower. Yes, fantasy flower. You know why I love brass? Because during the process it oxidizes and rubs off in a curious way. You can see it play with light. Let's try it on. Look at this beautiful brooch. We've had a bit of a debate as to whom it suits more. Tell us what you think in the comments. Let's see how it looks on you, with the scarf. I actually think that this is a perfect accessory for a regular white t-shirt. Take a regular white t-shirt. Or a white t-shirt. Sure. You're wearing a simple, laconic outfit and then bam, pretension for success. Olga is wearing a showy dress, and on it, it looks... Yes, a brooch doesn't go well with it, but I do have a couple of white t-shirts in my wardrobe. Olga is still begging me to gift it to her. And whether or not Vitaly gifts me the brooch, you will know from our upcoming videos. You'll either see me wear it or you won't. Let this be our little cliffhanger, because I don't even know myself, but I think we've done a great job today. A few bits of refuse can become an item. And that's the magic of golden hands. Trash can become... You can make one of these for yourself or as a present. I'd be happy to receive a brooch like this as a gift. 
Here, we have to say goodbye. This has been the Global Fashion Workshop Channel. I'm Olga Paukste, and this is Vitaly Shriganov and our big team. Subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and leave your comments below. See you soon. Bye.